Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Sharp Weekly. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can perform infinite scrolling in Swift UI. So for those of you who are not familiar with infinite scrolling, basically the idea is you don't really fetch all the information you want to display at one time. You display it in smaller chunks and when the person reaches the bottom of the scroll view, then you make a request and you load more. The first thing we need to do is to implement our server. Now you can have any server that you want. I'm just going to go ahead and use the Express.js and node hosted on Glitch. So the first thing we need to do is to create some sort of a server route that will return us some fake data. Now don't worry about these routes that I already have. We are just going to be creating a brand new route. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to say app.get. And this can be done with any kind of a server that you are uh, implementing. You can use Vapor. You can use anything that you want. I'm comfortable with Node and Express.js. So that's why I'm going to implement it over here. So our route will be slash data. And we will be passing in a query string. So basically, our route will eventually look kind of like this. We will be passing page equals to one, page equals to two, page equals to three, and so on. So if somebody has to pass in query string parameters, we need to get that. So let's go ahead and get that. Request dot query dot page. And we will go ahead and create numbers and it will be an empty array. So basically the first idea is that I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we have this populated. And for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to populate this with integers. So we will be dealing with, we will be returning integers to the users. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this loop. We will go ahead and say numbers.push. This is going to go ahead and push index into numbers array. So that's fine. Basically, numbers will end up being an array of 500 different entries, which will be numbers. Now I can go ahead and create something called a page size. And let's say that every single page, I want to display 20 items. Next, I can return all the response. Since I am interested in not getting 500 different records or items, I'm going to go ahead and perform a slice, page minus one, multiply by page size, so whatever the page size is. And how many items do we want to pick? That will be page size multiplied by page. And that's it. Let's go ahead and check it out. The cool thing about Glitch is that we can simply write the, we can simply change the URL over here and check out what it will do. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass in page one. If I pass in page one, you can see that it is returning me 20 items because the page size, we have set it up to be 20. Okay, so what if we change this to page two? You can see that it's going to give me the next 20 items from 21 to 40. Page three and so on. So it looks like it's working correctly. So our server part is actually done. So this is great, right? Now we can move on to our client part, meaning the Swift UI application. Okay, so our Swift UI application doesn't really have much going on right now, as you can see. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and create a view model. Now this app is so simple that you don't really need to create a view model, but I'm still going to show you that how you can use MVVM design pattern to implement the infinite scrolling. So let me go ahead and add a number list view model. Class number list view model, which is going to be using observable object. Let's go ahead and import Swift UI. Now the number list view model will control everything that is going on on the screen, which will be displaying all the numbers because that's our data. 
But your data can be anything. I mean, it can be a list of customers, a list of records, a list of products. It can be anything. I'm just choosing numbers to keep things very simple. So we will be dealing with numbers, which will be an integer array. Now we can go ahead and create our function that will be responsible for getting all the data, all right, and populating the data. So I will say populate data. You will pass in a page number to it. There we go. And now we can go ahead and perform the actual fetch. We need a URL for that. So I'm just going to go ahead and create the URL. The important thing to note over here with the URL is that since you're passing in the page number, that page number is then passed to the URL so that the actual URL or the endpoint on the service that you already saw, the Node.js service, can return you different set of data based, based on the page number. Now I can use URL session dot shared dot data task with a URL. There we go, this one. We will get a data. We will get some response. We are ignoring the response for now. And make sure that you call resume or else nothing's going to happen. Next, we are going to go ahead and try to unwrap the data. Great. Once the data has been unwrapped, we can go ahead and decode it. So JSON decoder dot decode integer dot self because it's simply a list of integer, an array of integer, and that's pretty much it. And we will get numbers. Finally, that's actually pretty much it. I mean, we can now finally go ahead and assign it to dispatch q dot main dot async and we can assign self or numbers equals to numbers. Okay, and we have to also make sure that we are unwrapping this. So we can go ahead and assign it kind of like this. Okay, great. So now we can go ahead and create an instance of numberless view model and call populate data. So jump back to the content view and create an instance of a numberless view model. We will also go ahead and use a list control to display all the numbers. The ID in this case will be self. We will get a particular number. This is hopefully coming from the actual API and we will display the number. We will also make sure that we call it at least once. So on up here, we will perform a numberless view model dot populate data passing in one. Let's go ahead and run this. And what we're trying to see hopefully is that it returns some data and it is displaying it on the screen. So there we go. We got 20 items, so that's great. And the reason that we're getting 20 items is because we're passing page number one, which is going to return you 20 items because we have already set on the server that the page size is 20 items. Now the question is, okay, that's fine, but how do we get more items? So what we want to do is once we load 20 items, and when it sees the last item or the second last item or the third last item, let's say 17, 18, or 19, or whatever, at that point, we can start loading the data. So when you see this page, it will already have loaded the next page. All right. So that is something that we can do. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we are only loading data if the number of items or the ID of the item is matching to be third or fourth item or third or fourth last item. So I'm going to go ahead and create a function called should load data in which you will pass in the ID, which is simply the number. And it is going to give you a Boolean value. And now this line is completely up to you, like how you want to proceed with it. I'm simply saying that if the numbers are count uh, minus two, 
is matching with the ID, which basically means that if there are 20 items in the list, in the page, so if the item is visible, which is 18, then yes, should load data and you can go ahead and load the data. All right. So that's pretty much it. Now we can go back to our page and for this text that appear, now we can make a condition over here that on appear, whenever the text appear, the first thing we are going to do is we are going to check if the number list view model dot should load data. There we go. If it does or if it should load data, then we already have the current page set up. So probably we should use that. So let's go ahead and use the current page. So I'm going to go ahead and create a current page. There we go. So if it should load data, then current page plus equals to one. All right. And now we can go ahead and call number list view model dot populate data and pass in the current page again. And that's it. Let's go ahead and run it and see that if it allows us to load the next page of data when we actually need it. So currently you can see there's a problem going on, right? Currently you can see that it is giving us the second page already. So we need to make sure that this doesn't happen and it is only giving us the first page. The other problem that you can see over here is that only giving you the second page because we reached that point to load the second page. But what about the first page? The first page is gone. All right. So this is something that we need to deal with. So let's go back to our populate data function. Okay. So here it is. Once we do get the data, once we do get some sort of a result from the server, instead of just assigning it, it may make sense that you append it. So numbers.append contents of numbers or an empty array. Actually, you don't really need an empty array in that case. But let's go ahead and run this. This is just for unwrapping purposes. Okay, let's go ahead and run it again. Okay, so we get 1 to 20. That's good. If I scroll, and there we go. We got more stuff now being loaded and more stuff. So as soon as I reach kind of like the end, if it reaches at the end, it starts loading more and more data. And it's going to start loading the data uh, till we reach 500. So this is how you create infinite scrolling. And it's not really visible right now, but every time I am scrolling, uh, it is actually making a call. Whenever it's time to make a call, it does make a call on the network and fetches the new data. So this is how you will create infinite scrolling in SwiftUI. Hey, if you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my Udemy courses. I also have a link to the Patreon in the YouTube. If you want to become a Patreon member, that will be great too. And you can see I have a lot of courses on iOS development, Swift UI, MVVM design pattern, uh, Swift language, async and await. If you want to learn about async and await, then this is the best course for you. Uh, I have courses on core data, which is extremely popular course. So definitely check out that one if you're interested in learning about core data and a lot more courses, MVVM, iOS, Flutter, React, and so on. So the best way to get these courses would be to check out the links in the YouTube description and uh, you will get the best discount. Thank you so much for your continuous support and I really hope that you have enjoyed this video.